everybody in this room and give the Lord praise and bless him the waving of your hands is a sign of thanksgiving and worship to him give him glory give him praise as you wave your hands open your mouth and bless him open your mouth and adore him open your mouth and acknowledge him Open your mouth, come on, open your mouth, give him glory, give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Uh-uh, we can do better than that. Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you are expectant tonight and you believe that God is set to do something mighty, marvelous and miraculous in your life? Support the waving of your hands with a shout of praise to Him. As an attestation of what you know He will do. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Are we set tonight? Are we set tonight? The first prayer tonight is a prayer of thanksgiving. You're not thanking him for what he has done any longer. You are thanking him for what he's about to do. Can you lift your voice in one minute and thank him? Open your mouth and just bless him. I said open your mouth. Raise a prayer of thanksgiving to him. Say Lord thank you for the miracles that I'm about to see in my life. Make sure you are louder than your neighbor. Thank you for the testimonies that are about to spring out of my life. Thank you for your power that is about to be demonstrated. Thank you because I know that you are visiting me, visiting my finances, visiting my family, visiting my life. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Open your mouth and thank Him. The Bible says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry. And He said, I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. Open your mouth in 60 seconds and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, before we go ahead with the meeting tonight, I want you to realize this one thing. This is not, I'm not telling you because I want you to say amen. I'm telling you because I know that is what God will do. No one will leave this place without a testimony. Listen, oh my God, I feel the anointing as I'm saying it now. I feel the anointing so, I don't know what, I don't know what is so special about this miracle service, but from Friday, there's been a strong release of the anointing upon me. I could feel it. This is not the service where you come just to watch other people take their testimonies and go. This is a service where the first set of people God will visit tonight are those who came to watch. Did you hear what I said? I thought you would shout an amen to that. You know, there are all kinds of people who come to church. Some just come. Let's just see this man of God, how powerful he is. I'm saying the first people to be hit by the power of God are those ones. Come on, your amen can be better than that. Listen, listen. 
every day in a man's life must not be the same every day should come with it with uniqueness and i tell you one thing about this miracle service something is about to happen in your life that will change the course of your history and alter your life forever i said something supernatural is about to happen for you something that will bring a lasting and an eternal change in your life from today in the name of jesus are we ready tonight listen i want you to believe god believe god as i'm standing here I don't, i'm not only believing god for you or those online i'm believing god for even myself i want to know why there's such an investment of the power of god because i can feel it so strong tonight there is going to be breakthroughs tonight there is going to be breakthroughs i'm telling you there's going to be a strange release of the ministry of angels in this place i'm telling you the testimonies that will break out of this meeting is something that in the next four sundays we will still have people coming back to share share their testimony of that which god has done for them in their life if you know you are the one i want you to shout a bigger amen come on you can shout it louder than your neighbor you can shout it louder than the person next to you clap your hands and give god a praise in this place hallelujah lift your hands let's just worship the lord before we sit down tonight is going to be a mighty a mighty visitation of his presence i want your heart to be open i want your faith to be alive tonight insist that god will do something to bring an end to the cycle of misfortunes the cycle of failures insist that god will do something to break the band of delay from your life Wave your hands and give him praise. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Lift those hands to him.
His presence is here tonight. Mighty Lord, oh, great in that Jehovah. Oh, Lua, at Toby, at Toby, oh, at Toby. I told me we love you, Jesus. Truly, there is none like you. Kosani Tolefi Shaka. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Just lift your hands to him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Thank you, Father. Now listen. Don't sing, just lift your hands. There are a few people God wants to touch before we even start the service. There are a few people that the hand of God will come mightily upon. It's something you can't resist. It's going to be very powerful. And that's the energy that will shift you to your next level. It will happen while I'm singing right now. Just lift your hands and let me sing. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. That's it. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Receive the touch of His presence. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Father, touch them right now. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, that's the anointing of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome Me potent Father of mercy and grace Thou art welcome Now just be still everywhere. Just be still. Just be still everywhere. Shh. Ushers, help me. Ushers, help me, please. I need quietness. I need quietness now. Just try to hush them. I know there is such a power here, but just try to hush them. There's something God wants to do. 
Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Lift your hands and close your eyes. There are seven people that the hand of God will come upon now. I see the angel of the Lord touch seven people right now. It will be mighty. Ushers, please stay at the light. Eyes closed everywhere. Just seven. There's an anointing coming upon them for the next level. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. Father, thank you. Write your symbols for me. Father, thank you. There are seven. There are seven. There are seven. There are seven. There are se- help that lady at the back here. Help her. Help them. There are seven. There are seven. That anointing shifts you to the next level. That anointing breaks every barrier around you. Shifts you to the next level. Of mercy and grace, Woo. thou art welcome. Hey, la masca pranda kaba isko paleta rudia. There's somebody here. This this place. There's somebody an angel will touch. I can feel it on my right hand. There's somebody that an angel will touch here on this place. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Touch. Oh Lord. So something new in my life. God will do things tonight, oh. God will do things, things, things. There is power available to shift you to your next level. There is power available for your next level. He told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 2, He said, you have dwelt on this mountain too long. There are people here present and following online. You have been on one spot for too long. I say this by the God of heaven. The power of God is about to catapult you to your next level. I said the power of God is about to catapult you to your next level. Something new in my life. Father, I'm asking you tonight that you walk in miracles and signs and wonders in this place I thank you because your presence is here and Lord I prayed one prayer to you today before I came that everyone will live with a miracle two years ago you told me that every month we should have miracle services so that you can visit your people and bring their, an end to their predicament and Lord, every of those services you have proven yourself. I ask you by my covenant with you, prove yourself tonight. Even those that have no business with a miracle, may they live with multiple miracles. May everybody live with a tangible experience of your power, of your presence, and of your glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Please take your beautiful seat. God bless you. In your presence there is life. Expression of your love. And revelation of your power and might. Your presence I can bring 
my love song of in the presence of just bring the two ladies that will come under the anointing I'm, I'm hearing a very loud shout there are two of them there are two of them that will come under the anointing now two ladies I'm hearing a very loud shout and that is a sign of a visitation coming to seven families here when it happens just bring them out and I need to just lay my hands on them but this is the sign God is just giving me right now there are two a very loud shout I think it will happen around one will happen around this place Spirit of God move in this place right now move in this place right now this is the time to write your symbols move in this place they are just two I can feel it now I feel the anointing and one around this place and the Lord is visiting by that sign seven families that's what the Lord is saying that's why bring them for me I need to lay my hands on them in your presence I can breathe my love so lovely in the presence of there's such an anointing in this place and I prophesy a visitation for seven families right now. I prophesy a visitation. God is about to turn your life around. God is about to turn your life around. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Samuel chapter 5. I welcome you to May Miracle Service and I trust the Lord to have His way tonight in Jesus' name. For those of you that are coming for the first time, I want to welcome you. And in case you are not familiar with these kinds of services, this is what we call the Ministry of the Spirit. So please just bear with us. A lot of it will happen all through the meeting till the end. There are people here that your miracle tonight is a shift. In your spiritual life a shift a different mantles that will fall in this place tonight the name of the Lord be praised in Jesus name second Samuel chapter 5 verse 18 to 20 for you are glorious and worthy to be praised the land upon the throne and now to you we lift our voice in praise the land upon you see when you see me sing like this it's because of the activity of the spirit that is happening every song sung is an invitation of his presence into this place every song sung is a procession that goes before the move of the spirit of god in this service by time there are mighty angelic manifestations happening here To you we lift our voice to save the land. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. you deserve the glory the honor
lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. You are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Father, thank you for what you will do tonight. I just feel a mighty, mighty, mighty weight of the presence of God in this place. This is why I know that there will be miracles. Because the Bible says in His presence is the fullness of joy. And Jesus told the disciples, He said, ask and receive. So that in receiving, your joy will be full. So if in the presence of God is fullness of joy, it means that it is because of the miracles that his children will receive in his presence. That's the reason why their joy will be full. It's one thing to have joy, it's another thing for your joy to be full. And I feel the anointing of his presence so strong. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me start with you. You are the first person I'll prophesy to today. Where's the mic? You, the drummer. Sit, yeah, just where you can stand, sit down, whatever. You are the first person I'll prophesy to tonight. Are you ready? This is just a question. Is there something wrong with your account? Like your bank account? Yes, sir. There's something wrong, like you need to fix. Yes, sir. All right. Let me tell you this. And you don't need to believe it. This is 1st of May, right? Yes, sir. Before 31st of this month, God will blow your mind by a superior financial miracle. You don't need to believe it. Okay? Because the angel to perform it is here. Alright? And in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. The grace that empowers for such dimensions of miracles rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus. From now till 31st, before 31st of May, you watch what will happen. This is not about your sacrifice or your sowing or your prayer. It's just the favor of God that is about to work for you. What you have never seen in your life will happen this month. In the name of Jesus. 2 Samuel 5 verse 18 to 20 Prayers that command supernatural breakthrough Write that down as a topic tonight Let's just look at the word of God briefly and then we'll pray From verse 18 The Philistines also Give me from verse um, 16 Let's do from verse 16 down I think it captures Okay 17 It captures everything I I did us to get here. Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. Verse 20. So David went to Baal Perazim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me, like a breakthrough of what? Water. Therefore he called the name of that place Bel Perazim. I prophesied to 21 people here. May the God of all breakthroughs show up for you this month. In the name of Jesus Christ. He called the name of that place Bel Perazim. It means the Lord of breakthroughs or the master of breakthroughs. 
some of you that's what you need you need a breakthrough there will always be a time in life where a man will be desperately in need of a breakthrough what is a breakthrough you need a breakthrough when you are being resisted by certain forces either resisting your advancement into the next level or resisting a particular release of divine supply into your life there is need for breakthrough when you encounter resistance are we together and that was what and i tell you the truth at every point in life there will be a season where what you need is a breakthrough it feels like the miracle is about to break forth but it continues to linger at that point you need a force you need a superior power to rise on your behalf and bring by force that's why the bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it it out by force in the niv translation it says the kingdom of god is forcefully advancing that means to advance in life is by force the first law of newton law of motion isn't it it says a body is at rest isn't it until an external force acts on it that object has the ability and the capacity to move but it will remain there in that one spot in that one position until a force that is stronger than it acts on it and not only does the force act on it the force also acts on the resistant force i think there's something like that in physics that means to advance in this life is not natural if anybody moved from one level to another there was a force that was applied and i tell you the truth in life you will always have a need there will be a season where what you need is a breakthrough sometimes you feel like the miracle is here but it's not manifesting sometimes the people that will help you have even called you and everything is set but for it to materialize at that time what you need is a breakthrough and may god give somebody a breakthrough this afternoon in the name of jesus christ the bible spoke of david here the bible says in second samuel the moment he was anointed king what happened you would have thought the next thing would be they'll throw a feast or they throw a party the bible says the next thing that happened was that the philistines gathered themselves against him that's why it is truly said that for every level there is a what devil he was just anointed the third time king over israel and that's when the greatest enemies of israel arose you know one of the only enemies that saul could not conquer one of the only enemies or enemy nation of israel that saul could not conquer was the philistine nation in fact they were the ones that killed him so david had risen to a level in life where he was coming against forces that were stronger than his predecessors like some of us here under the sound of my voice and online following you have gotten to a point where what is resisting you was what conquered and defeated your father conquered and defeated your mother or your or, or your ancestors before you it could be delayed it could be lack it could be anything whatsoever but david was a wise king the bible says as soon as he heard that they had gathered themselves against him he went to the stronghold that stronghold was called adolam in, in first samuel chapter 22 that was the place david escaped into when he was running from king saul he escaped into that cave adolam now because the cave was in the valley physically speaking david had already entrapped himself for the philistines i want you to get this picture adolam was a place in the southern part of judah that place the southern part of judah was filled with valleys are we together so david escaping to a cave was like he just brought himself it was almost like he submitted himself to the enemy it became easy for them to surround that cave and catch him but the bible didn't call it a cave this time around the bible called it a stronghold the first time david entered there it was called a cave but something had happened between david and god there and that place became a stronghold there are times in life when you are combating or you are up against forces that are greater than you 
some of you have dealt with witches and demons you are now coming against principalities what is resisting you now is a prince you know i told somebody i said we can wrestle demons but we don't sorry we can cast out demons but we don't cast out principalities we wrestle them i've been confronted by a principality twice i know what i'm telling you in fact you cannot rise to a place of territorial influence in any field if you have not fought battles and won principalities those are the kind of forces that you'll be praying and shouting jesus and they'll be looking at you you know the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against what principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness i don't have time maybe when we start the series on warfare spiritual warfare maybe in june or july i'm going to talk to you about these four dimensions or these four ranks of demonic forces of satanic forces a principality is a prince a satanic prince over a territory he governs that territory he enslaves that territory and when you will rise to a place of territorial dominance if you don't fraternize with the powers that support that principality they'll be up against you and i tell you the truth in this city <laughs> brothers and sisters the principalities here are strong are you hearing what i'm telling you i'm not just telling you stories i have met with them But because you are connected to this house you are already an overcomer are you hearing me uh-huh even the principalities they know the bible says david went into the stronghold there will be times where you need to go into your stronghold and pray certain kinds of prayers the prayer that david prayed was to ask the lord shall i pursue them these are the guys that slaughtered king saul remember that david became a soldier under king saul saul had been a warrior in fact the bible said physically he had a greater stature the bible says shoulder upwards he was taller than all the men of israel saul in his respect was a giant david trained under him david became a warrior under him but these were the guys that defeated and killed saul so david knew he was not up against something small and i tell you eh, you know that you are ready for greatness or you know you are ready for abundance when at that point in your life you are confronted by extremely strong forces every time you are in a season of your life where it looks like hell has broken loose that is just the eve to a mega breakthrough i'm telling you every time the battle seems extremely fierce and tough then know that your night is about to turn today. David prayed to God and the Lord told him, Pursue, for I will give them to you. I want to teach you tonight four prayers to pray that will command supernatural breakthrough for you every time. Some of you, this is your miracle this, this, this evening, no? some of you. If you get this knowledge and apply it anytime you need a supernatural breakthrough pray one of these prayers how many of you would like to know these prayers every i don't know about you but i know that there is a, every christian wants to know that when they call upon god he will answer isn't it this life is full of questions so what we are looking for is answers isn't it that's the truth there are prayers, certain prayers that command supernatural breakthrough. You remember the Bible told us in Acts chapter 12 about, the, about Peter when he was arrested. And in verse 5, the Bible says prayers were made by the church. The Bible didn't say prayers were prayed. It didn't say they said prayers. It said prayers was made. This was another dimension of prayer. And because of that an angel appeared the night to peter's execution and brought him out so much so powerful was peter's release that the bible says when they got to the gate that led to the city it opened on its own accord there is an investment of the power of god that can come around you your situations will not even wait for you to speak it will give way i'm telling you i wish i can hear a better amen it's true 
that before you walk out of this door or before this service is over the, 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 the forces that are responsible for that predicament or that problem will just naturally submit and leave you. The Bible says in Psalms 18, it says, Strangers shall hear my voice and obey. It said they shall all come out frightened from their hideouts. It said the foreigners will submit themselves to me. That's the kind of empowerment you will receive tonight. Four kinds of prayers to pray that command supernatural breakthrough. And I'm done tonight. Prayer number one is what I call the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. I-N-Q-U-I-R-Y. Inquiry. Please listen attentively tonight because many of you in the days and the years ahead, you will need these things. Every time you are at a fix in your life, you are at a point where nothing seems to move whether in your business or in your job or in your marriage or in your spiritual life and what you need is a breakthrough prayer of inquiry the bible didn't say david went there and started crying the bible didn't say david went and said oh god come against the philistines for me no he went to god for answers the prayer of inquiry is a prayer for of answers the prayer that is desperately in need of answers this is the kind of prayer that reveals the mystery behind the situation one of the reasons why a lot of people don't experience deliverance is not because they don't pray it's because of the kind of prayer they pray every time a man is in need of deliverance it is because he's confronted with situations that are backed up by demonic mysteries what is a mystery a mystery is a hidden information a hidden truth is hidden to the man but that man cannot negate the reality and the impact of those of that mystery there are many people fighting what they don't understand are we together it's true there are many people who have done everything they can do around their finances in the last five ten years they have tried but it looks like it's a cycle they keep coming back to the same place brother and sister let me tell you the truth i don't need to sound too spiritual but this is the truth you are fighting with a mystery there is something beyond your understanding that is at work against you and that's the reason why the kingdom of god is the kingdom of mysteries he said to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom that there is a hidden wisdom a hidden information in god that can counter that mystery that is at work in your life but you need to lay hold of that mystery you need to lay hold of that, of that wisdom the prayer of inquiry reveals the mystery behind the situation proverbs chapter 11 verse 9 the Bible says in the B part, it says, True knowledge shall the righteous be delivered. Not through prayer and fasting, no. There is a place for that. Not through sowing of seed, there is a place for that. The first thing you will need to experience deliverance is knowledge. It's a true knowledge, the just, the righteous. True knowledge. And that's because knowledge is the root of deliverance. Whatever you will do that will command that deliverance came to you because of a knowledge and information that dropped from heaven to you. That's the reason why, see, I advise you as a believer, eh? I know it's good to receive from God, but be concerned about your spiritual life. Seek to grow. Seek to grow in God. Seek to know God so that when you are confronted with situations you don't just apply everything no you pray nothing happens you apply anointing oil nothing happens then you apply water what's the next one now then salt then handkerchief no knowledge are like keys every key is for a door when you get to the door you know the key for which door every key has the potential to open doors but not every key can open every door knowledge and that knowledge is gotten when you pray the prayer of inquiry that's what david did he went to god he didn't gather his people for a fight no he knew the people he was coming against the philistine army had resisted israel from the time they came into canaan 
you are talking about 400 years when you are fighting something that has been against your forefathers and your ancestors and they didn't succeed brother don't fight first go and pray the prayer of inquiry you need to there are questions you need to ask when you are confronted with something that is, that is orchestrated by witchcraft don't just go and start shouting prayer or look for a prayer book no go and pray the prayer of inquiry go and find out from god what is wrong david went to god he said shall i because all the people before me that has fought the philistines they were strong and they were mighty Saul was mighty had a mighty army but he didn't defeat them so david went to god every time you are in need of supernatural breakthrough you are confronted with oppositions around you look for a stronghold that stronghold can be your secret place huh that stronghold can be the voice over your life you don't understand that it's true that stronghold can be the voice over your life there are times when you have prayed and your prayer seems not to be enough you need a higher grace to step in and break the protocol when the axe that was borrowed by the by, by the prophet fell into the water what did he do he cried to elisha he said alas master he didn't cry to the axe he went to elisha was he elisha that borrowed the axe no and the bible says the man of god gave instructions and the axe was recovered your stronghold sometimes can be your man of god though. it can be your voice the voice over your life i remember a time towards the end of the year we had finished all our programs for the year and suddenly i fell sick suddenly and after a few medications and prayers nothing was working <laughs> and i remember this night it looked like i was going to die like i would give up i took my phone you know that at that time you need help and you need help fast no need for long grammar you know i, I thank god for the medical profession but sometimes they, they do too they are, their procedures are too long when there's an emergency they begin to clack the person take this take that what happened yet no 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 attend to the person i took my phone and sent a message to my spiritual father and he just sent four words in his message to me and it was like somebody walked into my room touched me and removed what was wrong with me and i was fine by the next day this was after three days of medication and nothing happened so your stronghold it can be your secret place it can be the voice that god has placed over your life because the battles that you are fighting that person has fought are we together if you are with me say amen so prayer number one the prayer of inquiry the prayer of inquiry is what will reveal strategies that will counter or remedy that situation it is in the prayer of inquiry that strategies are revealed to counter or to remedy the situation number two the prayer of faith prayers that command supernatural breakthrough the prayer of faith number two mark chapter 11 verse 24 the bible says whatever things you desire when you pray it says believe that you receive them and you shall what have them believe that you receive it's like this is the password this is the proof to know that you will surely get it if you pray believing he didn't say don't pray you can pray he said but only make sure you add the component of faith look at james chapter 5 verse 13 14 and 15 let me show you something there james chapter 5 verse 13 the prayer of faith he said is anyone among you suffering king james say afflicted let him do what let him do or talk to me go back there let him do what that's all and then there's a foot stop there is anyone among you suffering let him do what pray he didn't say let him complain let him grumble let him blame his parents for not giving him a good start in life let him blame uh, 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 the, the organizations he applied to that didn't give him a job it, you know every time we are some there are people who what they do is to begin blaming others for their predicament no 
the first step to walking out of that situation is to take responsibility even if someone caused it for the reason why you are there take responsibility is there anyone afflicted among you let him do what pray next verse verse 14 is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord don't think it's the anointing that will do the work oh. look at what he says in the next verse he says and the prayer of faith will do what save the sick not the anointing oil that was just a point of contact because faith works with physical medium the bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for there must be a connection in the natural to agree with you to know that that which you are expecting in the supernatural will materialize in the natural there's always a contact point that's the reason why the end of your faith is an action you take you can't claim to have faith if there is no action supporting what you are hebrews 11 verse 6 he said for without faith it is impossible to please him if you go to god you must go with faith otherwise forget it he said for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them you know the meaning of that he is there first of all have the knowledge of whom this god is and you know who he is by the things he has done even if he has not done anything in your life there are billions of people all through history that he has done mighty things with in fact the names of god alone have you realized that no other spirit can call themselves that name as rebellious as satan is he cannot call his, himself one of the names of god because he doesn't have the capacity to stand in that shoe for instance he calls himself the man of war so just in case you are confronted with spiritual warfare in a season of your life god can arise as a man of war you know what a man of war is the only thing that excites that kind of a man is battle war on a normal day he's not smiling but when there is problem that's when he comes out you see every time you see military people passing with their vehicles you don't see them smiling do you ever see them smiling And you know they just they flag your car down and as they are flagging your car down they are looking at you to say just in case you want trouble in fact that's what we came for he said the lord of hosts is his name the lord of hosts i tell you the names that god gives himself nobody in the universe can attempt it's only god that can stand in that shoes and those names are not just bible names these are lifetime situations lifetime experiences that men in time past have gotten with god and they look for a name to support the revelation of god they saw he said thus said he in isaiah thus said he that maketh a way in the sea and a path among the mighty waters how that god can construct road in the sea in the space of two minutes is something we cannot understand so when you go to god you must go with this belief you must arm yourself with faith any prayer outside of faith is not prayer at all what makes your prayer prayer is because it was prayed out of faith and the prayer of faith shall save the sick the bible spoke in the next if you read the next verses in james chapter 5 verse 16 he says elijah was a man of like passions is he 16 now or 17 he was a man of like passions as we were he said but he prayed earnestly what separated him from us was that he prayed that there should be no rain never was there a time that a man prayed and withheld rain but somehow elijah knew that god was able to do the impossible he went and prayed and the bible says there was no rain for three and a half years you know that was very risky at least if it was for two days no problem so that if rain falls the third day eh, at least for three and a half years in each of these years there were rainy seasons but he shut down the heavens why the bible says he prayed in faith i'm telling you god 
till today god is still passionate about those who believe him i don't i've not seen god walk with somebody outside of faith no if god ever did a miracle or anything in your life outside of faith maybe that was an intervention of his mercy and you don't find that happening always but for you to see a man where every time he calls god answer there is a faith component there like it or not god is looking for men that would dare him step out of your generation and do things that nobody has done or your family put god to the test many times in my life i've dared god and i saw him came true for me many times many times number two the prayer of faith number three prayers that bring you into the presence of god another example of a prayer that commands supernatural breakthrough are prayers that brings you into the presence of god prayers that are capable of catapulting you into a dimension a reality of the presence of god the reason is because the presence of god the energy level in that place is not the same anywhere everywhere god is anything is possible he said where two or three are gathered in my name dear i am and where he is anything is possible are we together where he is anything he says for in your presence is the fullness of joy psalm 16 verse 11 and at your right hand there are what pleasures for how long forever you are my hiding place you always fill my heart with song of the deliverance wherever i am afraid i'll trust in I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. So if you need deliverance, where should you find yourself in? the presence of god psalms 31 he says in verse 20 he said thou hidest them in the secret place of your presence the presence of god is not only what makes you excited alone it's not only for the miraculous it's a place where god can hide you it's an address once you locate that place you become immune and impregnable to satanic attacks show me a man that understands the presence of god and has built it around his life i show you a man that the devil is handicapped about continually truth be told i'm telling you and you will see how that you can enter a vehicle planned already for accident and because of you that plan has to be suspended i'm telling you he said thou hidest them in the secret place if what you have around your life is not the presence of god maybe the bullets can get you even with bulletproof are you hearing what i'm saying do you know how secured the aso villa was during the time of general sani abacha do you know how se- those days it was not easy to come into power with coup you not only kill to get there you have to strengthen yourself to avert any other coup that will come that was one of nigeria's most powerful and brutal head of state i was told that that was the only man who hung the phone on the united states president and you know united states is like like world power and for almost eight years nigeria continued on that dictatorship and hardship but when god was ready god picked him how he was killed only god no we've heard all kinds of stories some say they gave him apple some said what but how how was it possible 
That was a man that was friends with people like Maman Gaddafi. You know Gaddafi? The late Gaddafi. In fact, one time Gaddafi visited him. You know, when two, two devils come together. How, what happened? What, how, where, how was there a breach? I'm telling the truth though. Bulletproof alone is not the assurance. Those of you who work in local governments, NGO and all of that, it's good to run into the bunker when they come. But that's not the assurance of your safety. A bullet can still find you there. The assurance of your safety is the presence of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, and I will say of my God, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. He said, surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall trust. He said, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the noisome pestilence that walketh in darkness or the destruction that wasted at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand by your right hand but only with your eyes you will see and by god my god the presence of god so if you don't have the presence of god look for somebody that carries it that's why i say anywhere i am in just forget there will be no attack there Because see, let me tell you the truth. We are more than this physical look. All you are seeing is this body. This body, and God made it slim to fashion. You know why? We are living in an ultra slim. Isn't it? These kinds of television, even low currents, they will still be on. But that your big sharp television in those days. So which one is more powerful? It's not by physical size, though. Let me tell you. The man can be slim, but there may be hundred angels walking around him. You just go and try to strike, then you know. And that's because angels are always where the presence of God is. You don't need to pray for angels. Just carry His presence. That's all. And how do you know or how do you carry the presence of God? It's very simple. Be conscious of the truth that He is always with you. That's what He said. He says, I will never leave nor forsake you. That's all. Live in that consciousness. It's not in a handkerchief, it's not in a cloth. No. What makes the things around you relevant? is the presence of God in you. He says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that God dwells in you? What makes the temple a temple and holy is the presence of God in it. And as long as you are a believer and you have given your heart to the Lord, you carry a dimension of His presence. And as you walk with God intimately, you walk with God especially in obedience. Ah! There's, some, there's a kind of the presence of God that is called jealousy. Huh? Why are you looking at me like that? It's not a bad word. The Bible says, For I, the Lord, am what? Okay. It's an angel. It's a terrible kind of angel that God puts around a man that he's so concerned about. Touch that man and see. I had the story of Reverend Dr. Omar Pai. That he went to a place in Ebony State to preach. And before he got there, the pastor called him and said, Please, sir, don't come. There are some cold boys around who say they will kill you. In fact, they wrote him a letter. They say, If you come, we'll kill you. And then he told them, He said, oh, Me, I've been looking for how to die. God will not allow me to die. So I'm coming. You know, there's. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And the story had it that when he arrived there, the pastor met him and said, Use this man, you are a very stubborn man. I said, You should stay. He said, My friend, keep quiet. The pastor told him, He said, There are those court boys, they are everywhere. In fact, some are under the platform where you stand to preach, waiting to kill you. He said, No problem. When he got there, he collected the mic. Those of you who are from the East, you know who I'm talking about. He got there, he took the mic, he said, Father, let every, and then he called the name of the court. He said, let every of them go to sleep now. And when they sleep, let them have a vision of hell. And when they wake up, let them repent and be born again. 
and then hire them to become pastors and almost immediately 250 men able men slept fell down and slept they woke up gave their life to christ and he said two years ago they sent him five million naira as an offering because they are pastors now you think it's just about no no some trust in chariots and some in horses but we remember prayers that bring you if only you can know how to access his presence in the midst of that trouble then you will know that breakthrough is as easy as the name sounds break through that's all it's as easy where you are in his presence and somebody somewhere what you are trying to ask god for he has already placed it as a desire in the in the heart of another person there's a realm like that people that you want to ask for favor they will be the ones coming to you and say how can we do this to help you there's a place like that the fact that you don't experience it often doesn't mean it doesn't happen it's real what do you think was on solomon that the bible says kings from all over the earth came to him just to hear his wisdom and they will not come empty they will come with something what was it around jesus that though he was born in a manger a manger is a house for for animals yet the bible says wise men from the east traveled down and brought gifts to him there there's something that can come upon your life that vetoes every barrier and every limitation you have in the natural people will not want to know your son name they will not want to know where you come from there's something around you that compels them to help you i've seen it a few times in my life it's true prayers that bring you into the presence of god can you pray one prayer before we proceed i'm almost done but before we proceed i want you to pray and say lord may i not leave this place without a touch of your presence let a dimension of your presence be invested around my life from today i'm tired of walking alone that was what clothed adam and eve the bible says they were naked but they were not ashamed that even in your weakness you are not afraid why because of the presence are you praying at all i want to carry your presence i'm tired of just hearing people talk about it make me a vessel that carries your presence young lady it's more than just your beauty to convince them it's the presence of god that you carry esther was not the most beautiful amongst the virgins but she had the presence of god on her carry the presence of god to your business enterprise carry it to your your office supernatural about your name jesus something happened when i mention i tell you listen to me is what's around you is what you carry that matters it's not your looks no it's not even how you dress there's something supernatural i traveled to a state one time without money and the moment i landed the person did wait for me to even get to my hotel room and change he walked up to me with currency you know money in in, in foreign currency in dollars i'm talking about thousands and my question was were there no pastors in that city Is what you carry you may not have anything but if you carry the presence of god miracles will be normal there will just be something about you that opens doors i thank god for intellectualism and intelligence i thank god for that i thank god for what you can do with your hands but brother sister after everything let the presence of god be your perfume are you hearing what i'm saying that's the only perfume that everybody must perceive when you enter the workplace you know you may spray and want somebody to perceive and maybe they don't because 
they have a, an, a more expensive one but when you carry the presence of God no man can deny you no man no man no man that's the environment that created all life so it has a, it has the ability to communicate to the life in that man without the man knowing have you not heard people say i don't know what is about you but i just want to help you have you not heard that before ah, may you begin to hear that in your life from today where somebody will look at your name and decides to fight for you until you get that thing If I have not had the presence of God around my life, I would have suffered and struggled. This will never be a reality. Because I have seen people brought by God into my life who have no business helping me. People who are above my class. Prayers that bring you to the presence of God. And finally, prayers that command supernatural breakthrough. Final prayer. Prayers of desperation. Prayers of desperation. Psalm 61 from verse 1 to 2. It says, Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend to my prayer. He said, From the ends of the earth, I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, He said, You will lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Is that true? Notice the kind of prayer. He said, Cry, isn't it? Hear my word? Cry. There is a prayer you pray when you are desperate. When you are in the midst of trouble. And that prayer is not the kind of prayer that has long grammar or long construction or voluminous. No. Most times it's just a cry. A cry from your desperation. Psalm 34 from verse 4 to 6. Help us. Verse 4 and 6 rather. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. Verse 5, he said, they looked to him and they were not ashamed. Their faces were enlightened. Verse 6, he said, this poor man cried. Is that it? Cried out. That's what I call the prayer of desperation. There are times where you don't need too many English. Huh? Or you, or the, you don't even have time for English. God, our Father, Father of our forefathers, Thank you. No, no, no. There, there are some problems that if, before you finish that prayer, it will swallow you. There are some problems where all you have is five seconds. Five seconds away from a deliverance. Five seconds away from a miracle. That's not in Jesus' name, amen kind of prayer. It's called what? A cry. God still hears cries. I came to comfort that woman who has been crying in her secret for a long time. God still hears your cry. He said, this poor man cried out. Out of the 8 billion people in the world, God zoomed to that man. He cried out and the Lord heard him. And did what? The Lord did not hear him and say, I will come back tomorrow. You know, when you are in, the need, of, you are in need of help, there are some people you text to them. It's the next day they will reply you when the situation is over. Isn't it? And sometimes it's not their fault. Maybe they are very busy or overwhelmed with activity. Sometimes there are people who send me messages for prayers. <laughs> I get to see the message maybe the next day. Amen. And I just, I just I, in my heart, I say, thank God that God is not like me. I think there's a song we used to sing those days. Hear yeah, my cry, O Lord. Hear yeah, my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayers. From the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. Will I cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed? You will lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. He said he heard him and did what saved him out of all his troubles. He heard and responded. When he says, when my heart is overwhelmed, you will lead me to a rock. A rock is a higher platform. It's like you are in the midst of all kinds of situations. You are entangled with all kinds of problems. Spiritual, physical forces against you. And then God stretches his hands of deliverance and picks you out. Look at Psalms 40 from verse 1. I like that prayer. 
I pray that God will do the same for somebody in the name of Jesus. Psalms 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. 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 When I say pray this evening, I want you to cry. Sometimes all you need to do is a cry. Sometimes. You know many times we weep before the Lord and feel that God has not heard. Simply because nothing supernatural happened at that point. Do you know that the Bible says God is so conscious about every tear drop that comes out of your eye. That in Psalms he says he keeps our tears in a bottle of remembrance. You have not seen that scripture. I will show you one day. He puts our tears in a bottle. The name of the bottle is remembrance. Every tear that comes out of your eye. Including the tears of your heart. Those are the unseen tears. Because let's face it. There are some situations. Especially when it is prolonged. That can just bring a man to misery. You lose your joy. You lose your sense of living. Your, your Everything about you just is like it will be swallowed up. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Look at the next verse. He heard my cry and this is what he did. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. May God bring somebody out of the pit of poverty today. I know why you don't want to shout. So that your next neighbor will not know that you are struggling financially. May God bring somebody out of the pit of poverty. There's no need to be ashamed though. Even if you have now, it is not enough. There are three phases. There is the phase called not enough. That's Egypt. Where you will compromise easily because you don't have enough for anything. But there is the next phase called just enough. That's the wilderness. All they had was enough for one day. But there is a place God wants to bring you to. It's called more than enough. Canaan. He told them that that land is so abundant that it is flowing with milk and honey surplus supply the prodigal son said to himself he said why do i struggle here with hunger when my father's servants have enough bread to spare listen god does not only want you to keep receiving help from people god wants to lift you to a point where you too can help others you too can become an answer to somebody i once or twice in my life have god has empowered me to do good to people and I can see that there is a joy that comes on me when I see the smile of their, on their face. That's when you truly represent God. After all, the Bible says the first reason for the anointing is to take away poverty. If you don't believe me, Isaiah 60 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach what? Good news. To who? What's the good news to the poor man? That's the first reason for the anointing to elevate what poverty because poverty has made many people backslided than witchcraft like it or not was it not because they were starving in the wilderness that they cried and wanted to go back to egypt don't say it's not important to i say it again by the god of heaven may god bring somebody out of the pit of lack in the name of jesus christ he also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay have you been in have you what do they call it in nigeria we call it what potter potter swamp isn't it the more you try to come out the more you sink in many years ago when i was still then i remember one night we were coming back from prayer meeting prayer meeting oh, i'm coming back from prayer meeting i fell into mud and for almost 30 minutes we were there struggling at the end of the day i had to lose one of my shoes and there are there are there are situations in life that are like that you struggle to make ends meet but ends are not meeting you started this business nothing is working then you opted into this one nothing is working you opted this. is there something wrong it's like something is behind the scene sabotaging your effort May God bring you out of that clay this evening. He said, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. It happens. Why? Because of the prayer of desperation. You know why you must pray in the time of trouble and in the times of desperation? It's because the Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, 
he said call upon me isn't it in the time of trouble and i what answer you now home chapter 1 verse 7 he said the lord is good is a stronghold in the day of trouble give us that verse verse 7 now home chapter 1 the lord is good a stronghold in the day of when Tro there's always a day called trouble ask Job. And every one of us in this life will face it at one point or the other. No matter how you fast and pray, there will be that day of crisis. From the next bad thing to the next bad thing to the next bad By noon, four bad things have happened to you. But listen to me, this is a strategy for those days. Always know that God is still with you in the midst of that fire. And that is when you should keep your praise alive. Even in my darkest hour, through the sorrows and the pain, I will sing, I will praise. Lift my hands to honor you. Lift my hands to honor you. Why? Because of what is true. There is such a season like, I won't lie to you, I believe in the miracles. I believe God is able to save and deliver. But there is always a time like that in every man's life. Where you wake up on a very good morning. And that day ends bad. There's always a place like that. So don't try to avoid it. Just prepare yourself. Arm yourself with the promises of God. Let it become your stability in those days. And be like Job that says, Though he yet slay me. What did he say? He said, yet I will trust him. He said, for I know that my redeemer liveth. And what will happen? He said, he shall stand at last on the earth. He said that though this flesh is destroyed, this skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will still see God. Those are the days where you have to hope in God until you come out of that situation. God will allow you to come. Why? Because he wants to mature you. Because in life, we grow by the problems we solve. You become great by the problems. It is the problems around you that make us know you are great. Not the car you have, not the house. No. Have you seen the lions and you came out alive? David told Saul. When Saul said, how are you able to defeat this man? He has been a warrior from his youth. David said, I have met with lions and bears. It happens to individuals, to families, to ministries. But guess what? The end of Job was that God turned his captivity and restored him double. After those seasons in your life, you will come out with double restoration. I'm telling you. It's true. It's true. I don't have time. I would have shown you how God restored Job. The same people that left him in, a, in his day of predicament, that denied him. God did something around his life that brought them back. And all of them contributed to ensure that he had restoration. In those moments, it's the prayer of desperation that you must pray. The prayer of desperation. Just the way blind Bartimaeus prayed in Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52. The Bible says Jesus was going out of Jericho. Jericho. He was going out. He was done with his crusade and everything. He was leaving. Somehow, Bartimaeus was not opportune to be in the crusade because he was blind. He was not opportune to be redeemed the reach of Jesus for a miracle. Why? Because he was blind. He was already disadvantaged. But the Bible says when he heard that Jesus was passing, just the way tonight, Jesus will pass through this auditorium. And he's passing not just to announce that he's passing. He's passing because he wants to take some troubles from some people. I want you to believe it. I'm telling you, believe it. Believe it. This is God of heaven we are talking about. And the Bible says, Bartimaeus cried out. They tried to hush him, keep quiet. The Bible says he cried out the more. And his cry got to the ears of Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus stood still. Notice that the Bible says in Colossians that in him all things consist. In Acts chapter two, chapter 17, it says, In him we live, we move, and we have our being. That means everything in this life has their motion 
and their existence through Jesus. But the Bible says he stood still. That means God can make the whole world stand still for your sake. Somebody didn't catch that revelation. He said he stood still and turned and sent for them to call him. Why? He cried. Some of us all, we, we have done everything but cry. Why? Because we feel that cry is a sign of weakness. No. Cry is a sign of surrendering to a higher power. Maybe that's the reason why women can get God to work in their life more. Maybe. I, don't, I didn't say that. I just said maybe. Maybe. That's the reason why when we come for services like this, women are more within the reach of the anointing. You know why? Because they know how to use their emotions to get God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has emotions. Not God the Father. Not God the Son. The Holy Spirit. So they have learned how to cry and roll on the ground. Or go to the altar and cry and roll on the ground. And then God is moved. You know, a woman and the Holy Spirit are comparable in almost every point. Almost, not all. Okay? Yeah. Almost. He said, I will send you a helper. What is the name of a woman? Help me. Help, isn't it? That's the name. In fact, that was the first name before Adam. That was the name God gave. God said, I will, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will do what? I will send him a help. That was God's own name. It was Adam that called that woman. Huh? So you are a help first before you are a woman. Understand that this is not marriage teaching, but know that for now. Huh? The Holy Spirit has emotions just the way women have emotions. Women are moved by what they hear. The Holy Spirit is moved by what? You don't believe? The Holy Spirit is moved by what he hears. You don't believe because you don't worship him enough in your secret. When we say bless the name of the Lord, adore him, praise him, call him those names, what you are doing is you are only inciting him to act on your behalf. But when you keep quiet, that's the, that's the best and the first display of pride and arrogance. You are telling God, well, I'm on my own. Or I can help myself here. Yeah. I know you are God, but you know, just stay. I don't have too much to say to you. Is somebody getting me tonight? Yes. Be here yeah, today, the Holy Spirit is moved by what you say to Him. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? the mouth will speak so if you call him healer what will he be to you healer you call him savior who will he be to you savior for every time you call upon god whatever you say to him or whatever name you call him in the place of praise and worship you have just created the environment around your life for him to act in that respect for some of you he will be a restorer tonight for some of you a miracle worker what you need is a miracle humanly speaking you have tried everything even to this morning you tried nothing happened what you need is a miracle i came to tell you that he's called the miracle worker that's his name the miracle worker you're the god of miracles signs and wonders we believe in your power we believe for you're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe. Sing it one more time. For you're the God of miracles. You are signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe. Come on, sing it. Let the devil hear it. You're the God of it is time to pray I think we've spoken enough now it's time for us to allow God do what he wants to do I taught you four prayers that command supernatural breakthrough number one the prayer of inquiry 
Number two, the prayer of faith. Number three, the prayer that ushers you into the presence of God. But most importantly, number four, the prayer of desperation. Where like Bartimaeus, you raise a cry unashamedly, calling God to act on your behalf. Asking him whether this situation has become bigger than him to solve. What is a child that God cannot give you? What is a breakthrough that God cannot give you? What is a job that God cannot give you? In fact, some of you, you need two miracles to happen at once in that dimension of your life. Not for anything, just to prove that you serve the God that is called more than enough. Listen, before we pray, listen. Let me tell you something about God. The Bible says He's able to do exceeding abundantly. Then far above all that we ask or think according to what the power that is at work so god will look at he looks at your the bible says that above all we ask or think he looks at the limitation of your imagination humanly speaking the mind of a man is unlimited but even to god there is still a limit to your imaginations that what you imagine you imagine because it is already possible if you imagine a man flying it's already possible because aeroplanes are flying Whatever you imagine now, it is because it is already possible. But God will surpass your imagination and blow your mind. That's when He can give you three miracles in one month. He can give you three miracles in one day. When you are trying to breathe from one, He gives you another one. Not for anything, just as a signing of His signature. This is me, God, the God of all possibilities. Signed, sealed, and approved. You need that God to show up for you. I want you to lift your voice in the next two minutes. And ask God for a visitation tonight. Open your mouth and pray. No, come on, you can cry. You can pray and cry louder. Asking for a visitation, a personal visitation in your life. You know the area of your life where you must touch. You know the area of your life where there is a need. Except you did come with an expectation. Except you did come with a need. Open your mouth like Matthias and Those of you following online, distance is not a barrier. The same God can move with you in your homes. He can move with you in your offices. He can move with you whatever part of the world you are listening to me from. Ask Him to arise on your behalf. Ask Him for a tangible situation. If he did it before, he can do it again. Is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? He's the God of all possibilities. There is nothing too hard for him to do. There is nothing too hard for him to do. Come on, cry. Come on, cry. In Jesus name we pray Ezekiel 21 verse 27 few prayers tonight and then we'll begin to minister as the Holy Spirit help us the power of God is here already I'm telling you I want us to pray this every cycle of misfortune around your life will fall down today if you don't have any around your life around your family what is a cycle of misfortune repeated patterns of evil or bad activities when bad things keep happening again and again is a it's called a cycle some it can be a cycle of delay some it can be a cycle of failure some it can be a cycle of promise and faith 
you will always end up waiting it will never come they will promise you will end up waiting but it will never come but God is turning away that cycle in the name of Jesus give me in King James translation please let's read it quickly he says overturn I think he uses the word overturn I will overturn 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 it and it shall be no more until he comes whose right it is and I will give it to him I will overturn it's like God reversing the cycle reversing the cycle of affliction reversing the cycle of lack and poverty listen listen to me one of the things that God told me he will solve this night huh, is financial crisis get ready for financial testimonies after this meeting I'm telling you are we ready to pray I want you to turn this scripture into a prayer God you said you will overturn tonight overturn the cycle of misfortune Overturn every cycle of shame in my life. Overturn every cycle of failure. Come on, somebody needs to pray like you believe. Somebody needs to pray like you know that God is able to do. If you don't have any, pray for your family. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your parents. Amen. Pray. Isaiah 49, verse 24 and 25. Another scripture. My God, there's power in this place. There is power in your name. Kalamakos Kapratea. Miracles happen in your name. We lift our voice to pray. It's you that I see. Look at this. But thus said the Lord. No, give me the, la- the first verse 24 25. 24 25. There's power in this place, I tell you. 24, quickly. 24 25. Shall the prey be taken away from the mighty? Or the lawful captives deliver. That's what he says in 24. Shall the prey be taken away from the mighty? Listen to me. Listen. Listen. He says, Shall the prey be taken away from the mighty or the lawful captives delivered? There's something called lawful captivity. That this captivity in your life is because Satan has a legal access. This is not about trying to bind the devil out. No. He entered maybe by reason of ignorance or by reason of disobedience or sin or something that happened in your ancestry that is affecting you. There are what the Bible calls lawful captivity. Captivity that you did not negotiate. You only walked into it because you came from that family. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are families. Listen. I'm talking finances now. There are families where there is an ancestral captivity of debt. Debt. 
whatever you do you must always be in debt there are families like that believe me believe me it happened with your grandfather it happened with your parents up till now 20 years later they are still paying some debts they don't even understand how it came and it's not like they are not good people they are good people but the bible says there are lawful captives there are some things satan did in your life because he had a right or a reason somehow and now the question shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered next verse he said thus said the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered why he said for i will contend with him god is about to arise for somebody god is about to arise for a family here god is about to contend with your pursuers god is about to contend with those that trouble you in the next few minutes i want you to lift your voice and say oh god arise and remove this captivity remove this captivity remove this lawful captivity Final prayer is concerning your finance. Listen to me. I believe in all the principles that govern financial prosperity as scripture declares to us. I believe in everything that you must do as a man. But do you know that there is a grace that can force a man to prosper? The Bible says in Genesis 26 verse 13 from verse 12 he said, And Isaac sowed in that land in the same year he put the same year because it was the same year of famine there was famine in the land there was no rain but isaac sowed and the bible says god blessed him and he reaped a hundredfold verse 13 he said and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became prosperous there's such a thing as a grace to prosper can you lift your voice if you are tired of this level and say no let that grace to prosper that grace that forces me to prosper rest upon my life today 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 are you praying as well Sala <laughs> <laughs> 
grace to boost up the grace that I take the mouth of the wilderness and bring it to the palace of wealth. The grace that can turn the fortunes of the man in one day, in one day. Please lift your hands everywhere. I feel an anointing now. There is deliverance that is about to happen now. Please lift your hands everywhere. Eyes closed. There's something called stagnation. Where a man is never able to make progress. God is about to destroy that captivity now. Some of you are suffering from stagnation in your finances, in your marriages, in different aspects of your life. You are stuck in one place. You cannot move to the next level in destiny. Some of you is because there is a curse from your background. Some of you is because there is a, a, a power, an ancestry, powers of ancestry that has programmed stagnation. Lift your hands. Deliverance is about to come now. Oh, thank you for the anointing. The Bible says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is higher than every other name. And at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. The cause of stagnation will be broken now. The cause of stagnation will be broken now. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Break, 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 break. That's it, that's it, that's the anointing. I'm seeing at least four family. It's like a cross from your lineage where nobody rises above a particular place. And because of that, everybody is struggling financially. But in a name that is above every other name, you shout that name, Jesus, one more time. I'm seeing at least four families that God is sakatoka patakataka. God is setting you free tonight. Those altars are going to be destroyed. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cross those altars. I cross those altars. I cross those altars. I cross heaven. Help them, help them. I cross those altars. That's it, that's the power. Help them, just help them. That's the power of God. Altars of ancestry, altars of witchcraft, altars that has programmed on the females in your family or on the males in your family, altars that has been speaking against the destiny of men in a name that is above every other name. Let those altars catch fire now, catch fire now, catch fire now, catch fire now, catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. Is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. My God, God is about to ride into somebody's family this evening. Mountains bow down, 
and the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. I'm thinking of prophetically to somebody who is like him. Lion and the Lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, and the oceans roll to the Lord of hosts. There's somebody I'm seeing in the spirit, and now the hand of God will come upon you mightily. I'm seeing the face of an old woman. I'm seeing the face of an old woman holding a small native pot. And the Lord is telling me that is the spirit that has resisted people from your lineage. And that's why they struggle financially. But in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the God of heaven, I send fire against that spirit. I send fire against that spirit. The hand of God is coming upon you now. And that yoke is broken now. It's broken forever. It's broken forever. It's broken forever. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break it. Listen to me. I want to pray against delay now. And the power of God, will, my, my God, I can feel the angel. The power of God will come on some people now. This thing called delay is, is a yoke, like it or not. There is a spirit system responsible for delay. Whether it's delay in marriage, in finance, delay of any kind. The Bible says, wait for it. It shall tarry. It shall come to pass. It shall not tarry. Not every delay is God, God, responsi God, God responsible for. Please listen. Before I pray. I'm seeing a name like Priscilla. 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 Is there anybody like that? Or you have a sibling? Priscilla. Priscilla. I need to pray for that person. Either it's your name or you have a sibling. I know that there will be one or two, but there's somebody specific. I will pray for all of them, but there will be one or two. Priscilla. Particularly if it is a name, come. Or if it is a sister, Priscilla. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Now I'm going to pray. I don't know how we'll do this. Um, okay, don't bring them out. Just help them. But the first place we are going to break delay from is in marriages. Marital settlement. God showed me 7 to 11 people that His hand will come upon. And He's giving you speed to accelerate into your marital destiny. And if God be God, before this time next year, you will be settled down in your house. Lift your hands, please. I'm about to pray. Seven to eleven people, the hand of God will come on you. And there's going to be a shift, a major shift. You are crossing over. The Bible says, none shall lack her mate. None shall lack her mate. Kapos kapa, branda kate kapa, kata. Every demon of marital delay. I come against you now in the name of Jesus. And I command that your yoke is broken now. The yoke of marital delay is broken now. It's broken now.
Now I want to pray. I saw seven to eleven people that the hand of God very strong. I saw a mighty anointing come on them. And God is saying it's time for you to be settled. Man or woman, boy or girl, under the sound of my voice, every one of those seven to eleven people that the enemy has caged, I break that cage now. I may be anointed for marital settlement. Come on you now. Come on you now. Come on you now. Come on you now. There are seven to eleven of them. Come for you now. Come on you now. Please lift your hands. Just help them, the 7 to 11 of them. The hand of God is still coming on them. 7 to 11 of them. Marita delay is over. It's over. In fact, there are two ladies I'm seeing here that will come under the anointing. Ushers, be attentive. There are two ladies I'm seeing here that will come under the anointing. That train is broken now. That train is broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. Help us in. Help the person. Delay over careers. For a long time you have been applying for a job or struggling to get something to do. And in most cases you are qualified. Makonda Brateka Kaskafalakadia. I call upon the God of heaven who is the lifter of men in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In 21 days, may the Lord shift you to a miracle job. May the Lord release your miracle job now. May the Lord release a prayer to your life career. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody, I don't know if it's like a friend. It's like your friend with the name Sylvester. Sylvester. It's like your friend with the name Sylvester. Particularly, I'm even seeing somebody who is quite tall and kind of dark skin. It's like your friend. It's somebody around you with the name Sylvester. Sylvester. Please come, I want to pray for you. Please, all of us here, just lift your hands. Please, just follow instructions, okay? Listen to me, the anointing is going to pass through from the left to the right right now in the next 60 seconds. I saw padlocks, padlocks in the realm of the spirit and I saw an angel smashing those padlocks. Whoever's destiny has been held under lock and key, that devil will let you go now. Lift your hands, eyes closed. Father, I stretch my left hand from the left to the right. Let the angel of breakthrough pass. And let every padlock, every yoke that has held the destinies of men be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Be broken now. Help, 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 help ushers, please be. If the ushers here, you have to move. Be broken now. Holy Ghost. Hush. Hush. That young man at the back there. Help him. There's a fire. The one with his left hand shaking. There's a fire coming on you. Your family. There is a strange kind of breakthrough coming. Help him.
I pray for 60 people here that will shout an amen. May the anointing that forces men to help you in the next 60 days at the count of three, let that anointing rest upon your life. And in 60 days, may your life be implicated by destiny helpers. Take that anointing at the count of three. One, two, Take that grace. Your life must change. May men arise to help you. May men arise to support you. May systems arise to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Kababa Shanda Babaya. The anointing is strong here. I feel like it's time to pray for the sick. You are the Lord that He led me. You sent your thank you, Jesus. And All over this place, the Spirit is moving. All over this place, as the prophet said it should be. All over this place, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. As the waters. I'm going to pray for the sick now. Yes. Why? Why are you out? Why is he out? Huh? Huh? A friend. Could give him. Put the mic on their mouth. Who is? Who Sylvester. Is your friend? Sylvester. Is he tall? Yes, sir. Dark in complexion. Yes. That's the person I was talking about. Come. God is about to do something for your friend, but I'll pray for you. You are the Lord, my healer. Sylvester should thank you after now. I don't know if he is he is he in another state. Where is he? Huh? He's in Portacot. He's in Portacot now. Yes, I'm seeing somebody. Listen, let me give you the exact description. Huh? I'm seeing somebody, you are wearing a silver wristwatch, you are wearing a chain wristwatch. I'm seeing somebody putting on a chain wristwatch. Are you hearing me? You can confirm, you will go out and call like he wore a chain wristwatch today. Alright? And on a t-shirt. And I see somebody who has been struggling. God is bringing him out of what I call a pit. Are you hearing me? This is somebody that has all it takes to succeed, but he has been struggling. Ends are not meeting. But I see the hand of an angel, a mighty angel, pulling him out of a pit. In fact, I saw the angel come from heaven with the name Sylvester on a flag. Tell him that by this time, in a month's time, 
there will be a turn around in his de- in his destiny. Amen. Is he walking? No. As I'm seeing a company calling him. That's what I'm seeing. Are you hearing me? I'm seeing a company calling him like a job that will be offered to him. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I want you to tell him that. All right. Yes, Today. Is this day for a testimony. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, we use your son as a point of contact to Sylvester. Reach out to him all the way in Port Harcourt. Let delay come to an end. Amen. Let delay come to an end. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This your friend is not married, right? Yes, sir. He's not married. Yes, sir. I'm seeing a lady, a fair, like fair skinned lady, standing by his side. That's his fiance. And God is saying there's going to be a miracle that will happen in a year time. He's settling down. Amen. All this description, you just go and call and find out. You do everything matches because I'm seeing it. Sure. All right. Okay. I saw a lady, light skin in color, standing by his side to head to her, his head, her head to his shoulder. God is saying he's breaking the delay and he will settle them together. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes. Why is he here? This last brother. Priscilla, you are Priscilla's brother. Yes, senior Where? brother. Huh? I'm her senior brother. Senior brother. Where is she? She's at home in Giwa Barak. Huh? At home in Giwa Barak. Here in Giwa Barak. Yes. Wait. There's an anointing here. We are standing on holy ground. This is just a question, young man. This is just a question, okay? Let me know yes or no. If it fits the description. I'm saying somebody that is not taller than you. Yes, sir. Not taller than you. Yes, sir. And like your complexion. Yes, sir. Alright? Dark skin. Yes, sir. I want to pray and rebuke an infirmity from her life. Alright? Yes, sir. Because I saw in a vision, I saw her holding her abdomen. All right, lower abdomen, and I want to cause that there will be no growth that will come out of that place. Do you know what a growth is? Growth, growth. You know growth? Yes, sir. Like tumor, huh? Yes, sir. Or cancerous growth. I saw her holding it in pain, and I want to stop that from happening. Do you believe? Yes, sir. And there's somebody connected to you that God is healing of high problem now in your family. Yes. There's somebody in your family that God is in. I just saw an angel touching somebody's eyes. Yes, my There's mom. Your mom, yes. God is healing her of eye problem, right? Amen. Eye problem. Amen. Is it true she has an eye condition? Does yes. she use glasses? Yes, sir. Come, hold my hand. You sent your word and you. Father, we send an anointing through this young man to his family and in the name of Jesus we rebuke affliction. We rebuke affliction. We speak life to Priscilla and our health. We stop every unwanted growth in her body and we declare his mom is healed of eye condition right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. The angel of the Lord is touching me on my left ear just be sensitive there are two people that the lord will anoint right now and you begin to hear in the spirit he is increasing your spiritual ability to hear i can feel the hand of the angel on my left ear there are two of you a mighty anointing is coming on you holy ghost where are they where are they there are two of them there are two of them there are two of them you begin to hear in the spirit you begin to hear in the spirit you begin to hear in the spirit the hearing ears the angel is still touching my ear there are two more making them fall there are two more now the hearing ear and the seeing eye the lord made them breathe just give me 15 minutes and we'll be done with the service tonight if you are sick in any part of your body put your right hand there if it's in a delicate place where you can't touch for social reason 
put your right hand on your chest if you are standing for someone put raise your right hand up or better still if you can take your phone call those people whoever you know that is connected to you that is sick right now there's somebody i'm seeing your father in a hospital right now and god is about to heal that person now every time a prophecy comes like this i like that god doesn't mention name because he say what i say to one i say to all i'm seeing your father in a hospital bed and something like a plaster on his hand something like a plaster on his hand god is about to heal him right now if you have someone connected to you who is sick take your phone if you can if you have air time call them now i'm about to pray I'm about to pray the power of god will reach out to them wherever they are wherever they are if you are sick put your right hand where the infirmity is some of you god wants to take away recurring afflictions it goes and comes back in fact there is somebody here that sickness will go you will testify then it will come back it will go then it will come back it keeps tormenting you again and again There's a, there's a lady I'm seeing with pain around a delicate part of your body. It comes and it goes. It will come, torment you, and then it will go. But recently it has been coming too much. God wants to heal you. Put your right hand where that pain is. Something happened. Call those people who are sick and let the phone run. I want to pray. Just tell them there is a crazy man here that believes in a God that can do the impossible. Something happened and now oh la sayada There's going to be a miracle alert before the end of this service. For somebody i just saw that before i pray for the sick is the phone ringing or is the phone on have you called them can we pray father i thank you because you are the god that is called the healer and so in the name of jesus christ i want you to shout a believing amen in the name of jesus christ i rebuke the spirit of infirmity I rebuke disease. I rebuke the spirit of affliction. I command you, go from God's people. Go from God's people. In the name of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus, be healed of your infirmity. Be healed of affliction. High blood pressure, be healed now. Be healed now. Habits of any kind, be healed now. In the name of Jesus, chest conditions be healed now. Heart palpitation or hole in the heart be healed now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is healing somebody of chronic migraine headache. Chronic migraine headache. In the name of Jesus Christ, every blood condition in this place online or on phone in the name of jesus be healed now we reverse that condition now i prophesy in the name of jesus let genotypes be changed from ss and as to aa from ss and as to aa in the name of jesus hiv be healed now in the name of jesus Gonorrhea be healed now in the name of Jesus. Tuberculosis be healed now in the name of Jesus. Asthma be healed now. Come out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Malaria, fever, typhoid, sicknesses on that scale be healed now in the name of Jesus every bone condition like the bones of ezekiel let bone come to its bone now let broken bones be mended now pains in the bones be healed now 
Things in the joints be healed now. Fracture of any kind be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's somebody with a, a, I don't know, it's like a bone. The problem is actually in your bone. It's around your leg. And I see the Holy Spirit doing an alignment right now. I see the Holy Spirit doing an alignment on that leg. And in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Do what you couldn't do now. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. Father, whether I mention the case or not. Lord, I declare, let the healing balm of Gilead be smeared upon your people. Let the healing stream of the Spirit flow right now through the phones to their homes, to their hospitals. In the name of Jesus, eye conditions be healed now. There's somebody with a particular eye condition, you are almost going blind. But in the name of Jesus, see now. The spirit of blindness is rebuked from your eyes now. And I command you, see now. In the name of Jesus. Whether I call your condition or not, you are healed by the power of God. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Wave your hands, wave your hands, wave your hands. Wave your hands. Wave your hands, wave your hands. hands. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I don't know if we can take testimonies, maybe two. I know we are really out of time, but I apologize. This is miracle service. Thank God for the spiritivities ministration. Amen. Last week we closed very early, but we have to, you know, because of ministering here and there. But if God has healed you, you can sit down briefly. If you know God has healed you, check yourself, do what you couldn't do, and then come out. Let's take your testimony quickly in five minutes, and we are done tonight. While I get ready to make an altar call. If God has healed you, I want you to check yourself right now. Be sure. Those of you who called somebody on phone, I want you to call them and find out they are healed right now. Now everybody, no going anywhere for now. Just listen to this. As we are seated, if you are here and you need to give your heart to the Lord, I need to do this very quick. You are here, you are not born again, you are not saved. You are not saved. You don't have the life of God in you. You probably may have been coming to church, but you truly don't know Jesus. But you are saying to me, Apostle, this will be a good atmosphere for me to come and know the Lord. For me to become born again and have this experience of eternal life. Or possibly you are here, you used to be born again, but a lot of things may have happened to your Christian experience and you backslided. Or maybe the pressures of life and you don't know where you are now with God. And you want to rededicate your life. Don't be ashamed. Jesus said, be ashamed of me before men. I'll be ashamed of you in the presence of my Father in heaven. I know that there are one, two or three persons here and following online. That needs to come to Jesus. He is the way, the truth and the life. You cannot come to the Father because somebody invited you to church. You cannot come to the Father because you are from a Christian family. You cannot even come to the Father because you have a Christian name. You will only come to Him through the Son, Jesus. He died for your sins. I want to give you this opportunity. At the count of seven, I want you wherever you are, leave your seat and walk to the front. Come to me now and say yes to Jesus. And as they come, please put your hands together and celebrate God for their souls. And if you are following online, when we begin to make the sinner's prayer, I want you to join them and make that prayer. If you are saying yes to Jesus, wherever you are, everybody seated, I want you to walk out and meet me here right now in the next 7 to 10 seconds. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Jesus is calling you. This will be your greatest miracle. The Bible says as you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like some did in the wilderness. Come to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Or possibly you are struggling with an addiction or whatever it is. You need Jesus in your life to bring it to an end. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to come to the front before we take the testimonies. Meanwhile, if God has healed you or healed somebody you called, please walk to where is Pastor Sam? Please just take your position. Walk to the front quickly and let's take your testimony. Alright, I'm going to sing briefly and have these two set of people come. 
if you are saying yes to jesus unashamedly i want you to walk to the altar and if god has healed you or god healed somebody you call i want you to rush to pastor sam dear and let's take your testimonies you deserve the glory and the honor we lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name you deserve the glory if you are saying yes to jesus come out now please don't be ashamed walk out of your seat if you need somebody to escort you talk to the person around you or the usher close to you let them escort you to the front for you and if god has healed you please walk quickly let's just take your testimony and shame the devil there is no one else like you no one else there is no one else like you for you Lord said I should announce to somebody before I pray for these ones I see a breakthrough coming around your career in the next 7 to 14 days a breakthrough around your career this is like a job offer in 7 to 14 days from now it is coming to you in the name of the Lord Jesus God is releasing the angel of breakthrough to families here breakthrough in finances breakthrough for the fruit of the womb breakthrough for the fruit of the womb breakthrough in business in the name of Jesus those of you in front I want to honor you for this wonderful uh, decision you have made I would like to pray with you I want you to just put your right hand on your chest okay and do well to repeat these prayers after me your life is about to change now. Your life is about to be transformed. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I ask that you have mercy on me and forgive me of my sins. I receive eternal life today. Thank you for saving me. I declare that I am born again and I will serve you forever in Jesus name keep your right hand on your chest close your eyes father I pray for these ones and even those online I declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven I declare that their sins are wiped away in the name of Jesus I declare that your spirit will come into their lives they receive eternal life henceforth I pray that they will move forward ever and backward never. They will serve you all the days of their lives. Help them to grow to know you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' precious name. Church can say, Amen.